Hey, what's going on guys? It's Dutch. Welcome back to my class overview of uh, 2021. Uh, this time we've arrived at the support classes. So for Horde, that's Combat Medic, Jack, Mechanic, Robot Expert, and Tactician. And for Escape, obviously everything but Jack, unfortunately. So uh, let's get right into it. For uh, Combat Medic, I don't really tend to run Combat Medic for uh, Horde. Um, not because it's necessarily a uh, bad class or anything. Um, it's more a case of when you play Horde on either Master or Inconceivable, you need damage dealers and, uh, you know, a technician like a mechanic or a robotics expert. So most of the time, Combat Medic kind of just falls off the boat because they either don't do enough damage or they have no actual utility to help the team other than, you know, giving them some health and revives. But then on the highest difficulty, you tend to go down almost instantly if you get hit. So not really a fan of that, but still a decent class if you like to be, you know, a supportive uh, character. So let me move my uh, camera real quick, <laughs> unlike last time. So move this down and here we go. So uh, for the combat medic in Horde, I kind of tend to play sort of a tank build where I got perfect condition, which is 32% damage resistance, went over 50% health. Um, kills revive teammates within 18 meters of the kill. A custom Lancer, because obviously you can either use a retro or um, the normal Lancer, or even a GL if you want to. It's not really that big of a deal. Uh, dodge, more ballistic damage uh, resistance beyond 5 meters, and then helpful headshots. Now, if you've been playing Combat Medic before the updates, um, then helpful headshots wasn't all that great. This time it's quite strong, but it comes down to can you hit headshots or not, right? Can't hit headshots, don't bother. This is more uh, a skill to kind of, because um, it says here, I think, within 10 meters. So you have to be near your allies. You can't just be running off on your own. Because uh, if you do that, you're probably going to still get absolutely rinsed in the later uh, stages. Now, if you don't have intervention, <clears throat> You don't have intervention um then you can run something like uh where is it grenade kills for example where you know you recharge your team revive um from grenade kills uh other than that there isn't really all that much to it combat medic had a buff to its rifle damage plus 30 percent rifle damage which again it's it's okay they're they're attempting to uh obviously boost the effectiveness of the combat medic but it still kind of falls off so for escape i run dodge it's like really a tank build dodge modified snub because not in every map you can get a lancer if you can get a lancer i would swap this out for uh you know modified lancer i suppose perfect condition again more damage resistance razor's edge in case i am under 50 percent hp i take less damage and again intervention if you don't have intervention then for uh, escape i would still run helpful headshots uh, of course just like in my other videos if you don't have any of the higher skill uh, cards just swap them out for something that seems kind of synergetic don't even know if that's a word but we're gonna make it a word <laughs> uh, to kind of help out with the uh, the rest of the skills so that kind of covers combat medic so we'll go over jack real quick um jack's been nerfed into the ground almost to the point where it's such a, like a troll character to use um there's two ways to play jack either you kill you, know, you, you play the killer jack or you play the support jack personally i like the support jack more but again because he's been nerfed into the ground optimizer which gives you more uh, power for smelting weapons is is trash it's kind of pointless using that now. Uh, healing upgrade is nice if you don't have any of the higher level cards yet. Healing reach is nice. Repair speed is nice if you want to help out the engineer. <clears throat> and then you have these like niche cards like portable resupply. I don't tend to carry any weapons for people because everyone just buys their own or puts them on the weapons locker from the ones that they find. So it's kind of pointless. Um, so I play Killer Jack, which is essentially, you know... You get hijack something uh, like a boomer, uh, a boomer, a boom shot scion, right? Um, or a what are they called again? 
DR1 protector, I think, the ones with the, uh, uh, the tri shots or the salvos. Overall, it, it's quite it's quite shit. All of it's quite bad as Jack. They don't really do that much damage. The boom shot's really strong. Um, the elite drone with the claws really strong. So if you get a chance to use those, try them. Other than that, though, it's kind of just a filler class. <clears throat> I leveled him up because I wanted the skin, and that's pretty much it. Obviously, he's not an escape, so we'll just move on to uh, mechanic. Now, you might not expect this, but robotics experts and mechanic are two of my like favorite playstyles because you get to tell people what to do, <laughs> and I like to not necessarily tell people what to do, but I do like to be a role in the team that. Uh, is a playmaker sort of right so a mechanic and robotics expert to me are the most crucial class in horde uh, not an escape of course but in horde definitely because with a good mechanic and a good robotics expert you could pretty much take on one to 50 master if you have some good teammates um so mechanic ingenuity obviously right increased repair efficiency uh, i have uh, increased fortification health uh, overload for obviously the fortifications over 50% health do more damage. Uh, bloody shrapnel for tracker damage in case I use those. And reduced fabrication cost. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, that's really it. If you don't have bloody shrapnel, you can probably swap this out for something like best friends. If you're playing with a jack. Um, efficient sentry if you like to run the sentries. I used to play with armor plating all the time. Until I noticed that uh, even on master and inconceivable difficulties, most of the time, the fortifications wouldn't get damaged to the point that I had to, you know, stand there for like 20 years and try to uh, repair something, right? Uh, and on the flip side, most of the time, if something got damaged by like a boom shot or a matriarch, it will get blown up instantly. So this stuff has no use at all. You got overclock locker. Again, it's sort of useful. If you want to use it as a filler card, sure, go ahead. You got flow, damage resistance while repairing. It just depends on how you play and if you have <laughs> decent teammates or not. Most of the time, I don't. I got one or two of my friends with me uh, and we just carry the rest of the team. But if you're playing by yourself, then you have to be prepared for everything. So... Uh, Give it a shot, let me know what you think, and um, of course, let me know how you like to play as a mechanic. For escape, we use, uh, it's pretty much like pure enforcer build <laughs> for some reason. So you got custom robotics, increased damage on DB weapons, personal defense, in consecutive enforcer hits, increased damage, which is quite nice, to be honest. I don't have this leveled up because I didn't get this uh, until later on. Um, long range resistance in case I'm fighting against snipers. Uh, reduced recoil, pretty self explanatory. And then bloody shrapnel again. If you don't have bloody shrapnel, you can use something like, uh, let's see. Well, that's pretty much it. <laughs> there aren't really that many cards for uh, escape because mechanic is clearly just a class that you're supposed to play in, uh, in Horde. And we go over to Robotics Expert. Uh, robotics expert is the last support class that i leveled up to 20 only recently and it's a pretty decent class in fact i found out that this global sentry upgrade is actually universal and not only that you can stack this with multiple people so i haven't tried this yet and maybe you have and you can let me know but you can play as one engineer or even five robotics experts and everyone else will be a robotics experts running this class are right, running this uh, card and you'll basically start off with sentries that do 30 percent from the engineer uh card so 30 percent increased damage there and 35 percent per teammate so you know four teammates were playing robotics ex uh, expert that would be 120 140 because of 35 percent plus 30 percent off the uh uh, mechanic anyway so you're almost at 200 percent extra damage flat out and then you can also level up the perks in game to get more damage i'd like to try this 
and I'm gonna try this. And if I get it done, I'll probably make a video about it and show you guys absolutely how overpowered it's, uh, it's gonna be. And probably quite boring, because you're just gonna sit there watching these turrets just, you know, decimate everything. But uh, yeah, so this is what I run. Um, Global Sentry Upgrade, Nerves of Steel. I noticed that this one is absolutely essential if you're playing something like Blood Drive or uh, uh, Checkout or whatever, anything where enemies can get really close. Because Nerves of Steel and Combat Engineer, Combat Engineer is nice if you're repairing for a long time, but this takes like five seconds. It says two, but to be honest, it takes more like five seconds before you really notice that it's actually going faster. Well, with Nerves of Steel, you instantly notice if there's an enemy nearby, you're repairing quite quickly. Uh, explosive kill shot, so killing down but not out enemies deals 50% damage to surrounding enemies. It's sort of a filler card just because, um, you know, if you don't have homebody or, you know, you don't want to run something like resistance or whatever, then the explosive kill shot is very nice because even the turrets take advantage of this. A bloody DR1, just in case I have to pull out the ult, he does a massive amount of bleed damage and then obviously combat engineer. Uh, there's another way to play robotics expert. Uh, which would be more of the uh, escape build that I use. And that's more surrounded around uh, using precision weapons and the DR1. So how I would run this, and this is thanks to my boy Hawk uh, explaining this to me. You would basically get the ult and not use it. Because when the ult is ready, like it says here in bloody support, you do bleeding damage. Now bleeding damage combined with experimental weapons is increased db weapon damage plus bleeding now there's only one precision weapon from the dbs it's an m bar most of the time in escape you'll find yourself an m bar at one point or another so um yeah very useful obviously inspired sniping once you have an m bar or a marksa or whatever um using this will get your ult up quite quickly if you're accurate now i hate the m bar you might be different give it a shot so that kind of covers uh robotics expert and then the last but not least one of the strongest overall classes in the game uh tactician it's also one of my favorite classes not gonna lie if i can't run something from assault or tank uh, and i want to run something that's kind of just useful to everyone in the team i'll run tactician now in horde there's a couple ways of course to play them you can go the uh the ballistic route, so using a modified hammer burst, uh, maybe with um, eagle eyes or situational awareness to increase mark damage. You got cooperation and discipline, of course, which increases your damage like a hundredfold. It's really good. But me, I play the lazy way. <laughs> Again, recommended to me by my boy Hawk. <laughs> uh, grenade pouch, increasing your grenade capacity. In fact, let's just upgrade this live. While we're at it. The game is really slow. Even in uh, on PC. Uh, grenade pouch for increased grenade capacity. Shredder for you guessed it. Explosive hits. Deal bleeding damage. Resupply duration in case you know. Uh, I mean in case. It's always useful to have. You just resupply longer. Uh, huddle up. So once you're closer to teammates. And increased radius of supply. Of resupply um why do i run the resupply amplifier and not resupply a healing module it's because like i explained earlier on the highest difficulties you tend to go down almost instantly if you get hit by anything so to me lowering the damage taken is kind of pointless if the damage taken uh, is almost like 20 times your hp anyway so i tend to just use this so that everybody can get in the radius and start bombing the shit out of people uh, grenade pouch again give it a try yourself once you've experienced <laughs> how dumb it is to just walk to the fabricator use 500 energy to buy yourself a full stack of nades and just chuck them at the spawns over and over you're gonna love it believe me um other than that for escape escape is a different beast altogether uh in this case i use the modified hammer burst because nine out of ten times there's a hammer burst there disciplined is just a sick card to have shredder in case there are explosives around 
resupply duration and venom explosive resupply tactician i tend to only run on maps that i know 100 percent have hammer bursts uh, or explosive weapons that are just good to have uh, a lot of these filler cards like venom boost which you have to wait for you know the venom to to pop up i don't really tend to use anymore in the beginning i did but after a while you kind of outrun the venom most of the time so you don't really use this at all uh recharge bounty i used to think this was a really good card but i it might be me but it seems like this is bugged because i'm like a spastic uh, uh marker so i mark everything and everybody all the time and it says that people who kill the marked target get ultimate back i haven't noticed this since release i thought it worked but i asked all my friends when we played and they never really said oh yeah it's uh you know i can tell so uh let me know if this is bugged if you know if, if this is bugged or if i'm just not using it right but uh yeah that's uh that's essentially it uh great classes um other than that guys support is just overall good uh, good time playing um if you like to be a team player you know mechanic robotics expert is really good if you have a team of this plus jack i mean you could probably get one to 50 on masters with just those three classes uh to be fair the only problems you're going to run into is you know when you're up against some kind of boss like a kestrel or a uh what are they called matriarch that they destroy your fortifications instantly which is lame but you know if that's the way that it is then that's the way that it is you're just gonna have to deal with it somehow um other than that yeah that's pretty much it so i'll put the version of the game in the description below let me know what you guys thought of these classes and how you build your uh your support classes and of course keep watching subscribe for more and i'll uh, see you in the next one peace